Masvar, whatever, you know. Um, of course, I was injured that fight. So my last fight, I think just the reason why I was so successful and why it was such a good performance is because I, I had a healthy training camp. Um, the herniation in my neck, uh, I dealt with that. It was completely healed. And I was able to just train and fight without having to worry about injuries. Nice. So I was curious, the time away between then and now, were there more injuries to deal with or was it just waiting to get booked? It was waiting to get booked, you know. I kept asking, you know, my management for, for fights. And, you know, believe it or not, uh, no, no one really wanted to fight. I kept asking for top 15, top 10, and no one wanted to book me. So he was just like, let's just take this fight, you know, and keep you busy. And after this, I promise you we'll get you, a, you'll, get, you'll be ranked and we'll get you a higher-ranking opponent. What do you think about Julian as an opponent? I mean, he's had some setbacks, but he's had some great performances as well. Yeah, you know, um, I'm one of those guys, I always look at their strengths first. So one thing I notice, he's, he's tall, you know, he's 6'1". Second thing I notice, he seems to have decent cardio. And the third thing I notice, he, he seems to like to scrap. He likes to, he likes to scrap, but, you know, as well, I, I look at his weaknesses. I saw that he got knocked out by uh, Julian Arce, which I felt like I had no problem with him. I see that he's a little bit sloppy. He, he has holes in his game. He likes to get hit, and I think that's just a bad recipe for me. You know, I'm the least hit featherweight of all time. And, uh, you know, I'm a very high-level striker, uh, former world champion in Muay Thai, very high wrestling defense. My grappling is always getting better. So I see myself finishing this fight in a number of different ways. But just because I've beaten guys that have beaten him and he's had a setback, so I'm not taking this fight lightly. With the things you touched on, though, I do wonder, right? Like, he does like to scrap. But do you think he'll be willing to do that with you? Or do you think this is a fight where he'll turn to his grappling? I think, he, I think he's going he's gonna to try and scrap at first. And then when he feels something he doesn't like, he, of course he's going to turn it, try and try and turn it into a grappling match. Last thing for me, I mean, you kind of touched on it, but a win here, I mean, seven and one in your last eight, I mean, that's pretty crazy. Ranked opponent, I mean, it has to be a ranked opponent at that point, right? Yeah, definitely. Uh, after this fight, I got some big names that I want to call out um, and get myself back in the ranking system and, and start making my title run. I feel like my time is now. Came over here. You touched upon your Muay Thai background. I actually asked him how he would compare his striking to yours in MMA. And he said that in the past, he's actually done very well against high level technical strikers because he, in his words, he's scrappy and unorthodox. So I'm curious what you make of his striking in MMA. Um, who's the high level striker that he's beaten? Uh, I think he said he fought Medi Baghdad on The Ultimate Fighter, was the one that he brought up. He was a kickboxer. Yeah, I never heard of that dude. Um, I, was, I was a WMC world champion. Um, you know, I don't. I haven't seen him beat any high-level uh, strikers. You know, Julian Arce is a, a decent striker, and he got knocked out by him. So, you know, I think whatever whatever makes him feel good. But definitely, I think uh, me and him are, are different calibers. And I think he he's over uh, underestimated me because w- once you're in the the octagon with me, it's it's a lot different. I think he's he's maybe seen. He calls me a clean a clean striker, and I don't like to fight dirty, but. I know how to fight. I, you know, I just make it clean because I'm very technical. But if he wants to get up close and get into the danger zone, I think he's got a rude awakening. He also is looking forward to fighting in the big octagon because all of his past, like pre- lately, it's been all in the, 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 the here, where it's the smaller one. He said having more room to work will benefit him. So are you expecting anything different from him? Yeah, I, I think he wants that because he wants more room to run, you know. And uh, I hope he's not a runner. But uh, we'll see. He, I, I heard a couple interviews saying, you know, he wants to strike with me. But then I heard a couple interviews he wants to keep it long range. So I hope we don't have another, like, fight where it's like Zubar or, you know, he's running and running. But uh, I'm going to be cutting off the octagon. I'm going to be uh, putting the pressure down. And I'm going to make sure it's a fight. And has the UFC told you anything about the possibility of going back to Canada in the near future at all? You know, um, I heard, like, uh, when I first got booked for September, they were talking about Toronto, Vancouver, and yeah, they just kind of scrapped that. So I, I have heard talks about it, but uh, as of right now, I don't know. But I would love to do something um, back in Canada, obviously Toronto or Vancouver, or you know during Stab P time in in Calgary, Alberta, around like July. I think that would be perfect. And finally, uh, what are your thoughts on the main event between Hamza and Nate Diaz? How do you see that playing out? Um, you know, of course, I'm going to go with kind of everybody else. I see Hazmat, you know, taking the fight. But if it goes into the fourth and fifth rounds and he, he doesn't finish Nate Diaz, you know, Nate Diaz is one of those OGs that can 
that can kind of surprise you. So if it does hit the, the fourth and fifth rounds, I can see Nate Diaz giving him a little, maybe a little bit of problem. But, you know, it, it's definitely a tough fight. You know, they fed him a, fed him a lion in there.